Based on several recent scientific studies, the natural cork industry claims that their products can be associated with removal of CO2 from the air. The cork industry uses this claim for promoting their products such as wine bottle stoppers. According to the cork industry, the stopper can compensate for 20 to 40 percent of all greenhouse gas emissions associated with a wine bottle and its content. Nomacork asks CE Delft to verify whether this claim is correct. CE Delft is an independent research and consultancy company based in the Netherlands. It is an authoritative consultancy in the field of carbon footprinting and life cycle assessment and has an extensive track record regarding LCAs on biofuels and food products. Together with my colleague Harry Kruzen, I checked the claim and the study it is based on. And we came to the conclusion that the claim is not correct. This is due to two reasons, basically. The first one is that the claim is too high, the benefits are overestimated. Second reason, more importantly, is that methodologically it's not correct to take into account carbon fixation for forestry products in LCA. To understand this, I have to explain what carbon fixation is. As a tree grows, it takes up CO2 from the air and fixates it as carbon in the wooden parts like the branches, the roots and the bark. What the claim does is to allocate this carbon fixation to the cork products, first to the cork bark and then to the cork products. This way the cork products get a negative carbon footprint. So first of all, we checked whether it's correct to take into account carbon fixation in the LCAs of forestry products such as cork. We checked the standardizations methodology and we found that it's not correct to take it into account right now. The standardization methods do take into account land use change, but not carbon fixation, which is a natural process. According to the cork industry, up to 18 tons of carbon dioxide are fixated per ton of cork produced. Compared with statistical data for cork yield and cork oak growth, this seems four times to five times too high. And perhaps the claims are based on growth rates for the first years of a cork oak life and have the later stages of a cork oak life in which the cork is actually produced and in which growth rate is nearly zero been ignored. The studies underlying the claim also seem to ignore reference vegetation cover, that is the vegetation that was there before the cork oak woodlands were established. These reference vegetation covers, such as maritime pine forests, may contain more carbon per hectare than cork oak woodlands. And as a result, the net fixated amount of carbon dioxide may be grossly overestimated. Another aspect we looked into is how the carbon fixation is to be divided among the various cork products. The study on which the claim is based allocates all the CO2 from the cork bark to the cork products. But actually there is a first step to consider. The forest produces many products, not only cork bark. So first of all, the CO2 benefit should be divided among all these products. Then secondly, it should be divided among the other cork products, or the various cork products. And this has to be done uh, through economic allocation. You take the value of the cork products and then you divide the CO2 impact. The study on which the claim is based used an arbitrary method for allocation, which is not according to the ISO standards. To summarize, the claim made by the cork industry is methodologically incorrect. Actual carbon fixation would be four to five times lower. With correct allocation, a big part of CO2 would be allocated to other products. And if reference land use would be taken into account, there may be no net fixation at all. For a copy of the full report, please visit our website or feel free to contact CE Delft.